Okay, so there's been a little bit of question about how to build components um, the new ES6 way. So up until they released uh, the 13.1 beta, I believe, this was the way that you built, oh, sorry, that's the new way. <laughs> this is the way that you built React components. Uh, you called react.create class. However, with ES6 now, we have classes that are native to the language. So you can do things like class, accounts list, extends, React component. And this is how we want to do it uh, going forward. So I just wanted to walk through a couple of the uh, changes and a couple of the differences so that um, when you're looking to create a new React component that you don't end up copy pasting this stuff. Or it, even if you do, you translate it over to something that looks like this right here with uh, class, whatever the class name is, extends React component. And I noticed that in the Canvas starter app, there are still 14 instances where we call react.create class. So um, everybody can get some practice with uh, converting it over. It only takes about five minutes. It's a pretty fast thing, but it helps to solidify kind of some of the changes. So let's do that. Let's take a look at this user data.jsx. You'll notice that it does export default react.create class. So, um, and it has prop types. And I wanted to point out some of the differences as we go. So I'm going to create a new class here, and I'm going to call it user data. Whoops, user data extends React dot component component. I don't know why the M is so hard to hit. All right, and I don't have to. I'm not going to export this right here. Instead, I'm going to delete this line, and all you have to do is keep the curly bracket. So it looks a lot like classes in other languages that you might be familiar with, um, you know, Java or C. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the bottom and I'm gonna get rid of this other parenthesis. Now, and the semicolon. Now the reason we change that is this is no longer just a JavaScript object with attributes, because that's what it was before. That These were just attributes on a JavaScript object. Um, now they're actual functions on an ES6 class. So another thing that we'll have to do is walk through all of this code and remove these commas because these, whoops, we don't want that one. No, let's just fix these. We gotta go put that one comma back right here because this one is still just a JavaScript object. Uh, let's see, okay. So all the way down to our render method, those are all cleaned up. Um, so now we've got this prop types hanging out up here. So prop types no longer lives inside of the class as a method. It's going to be declared um, like this. So I'm going to have user data dot prop types equals. I'm going to pull this from inside of the class. Um, this is the way that the React guys recommended to do it in their blog or in their blog post. I'm, it's unclear to me whether you could do something like if I had left that code in place. Um, it's possible, although I've never tried it, you could do something like static prop types um, and maybe have it be a declaration. I, I don't know that that would work though. So we're gonna we're gonna do it the way that they recommend. And put it down here. Do user data dot prop types equals this. Okay, and so for anybody who hasn't used prop types before, this um, declares explicitly what properties are needed to render this component. Um, so whenever you declare a user data component, this says you must give me a property called user. It must be an object and that object is required. So in development, this will throw warnings. In production, this just goes away. Um, it's not gonna throw warnings and errors in production. All right, so the last thing we have to do is we have to export this class. So we can go uh, module dot exports equals user data. 
and now we have this exported. All right, so now the next thing I want to do, I have tests running for all of this code. So, or I have tests available. I don't, I'm running right now. I'm going to turn them on. So if I go into the Canvas Starter app and I go into the client directory, I can always just type Karma Start. This is going to start up all of my tests. Uh, we've done a refactor, and now you can see the benefit of writing tests. I can make sure that I didn't break anything. And sure enough, we have everything is successful, so I didn't break anything. And to the outside world, even though I, I've changed user data internally, I've changed it into an ESX class from react.create component, nobody else knows. This will just work the exact same way. Uh, it just helps to future-proof our code uh, by writing ES6 classes. All right, so there's one other thing I wanted to show. So we've got this login component that also needs to be turned into an ES6 class, but it has a get state. So let's walk through some of that because there's a change there. So I'm just going to copy and paste this for the sake of speed. So I've got this logout. logout class. Um, now there's no git initial state available to me anymore. Instead, you move it into the constructor. So I'm going to declare a constructor here and everything that was in my git initial state, I'm going to move into that constructor. Okay. So that's a first step, but I don't return the state from the constructor. Instead, I just set this.state equal to whatever the state needs to be. In this case, we can get the state from this get state method. In other situations, you might just set it to you know, some object right here uh, with whatever values you need. Get rid of that. Uh, now, the other thing, since I, am, I have declared a constructor, and this is a class, and I'm extending the React component, I have to call my parents constructor as well. And you have to do that first. If you put super down below these methods like this, you will get an error. Um, it does not like that. So call super, very first thing. Um, another uh, gotcha is that there, when you are in the constructor, there's no this.props available. All the other methods have that available, but the constructor does not. So if you need access to the properties that are passed into this component, you need to include it as one of the parameters passed to the constructor, and then the props will be available to you, and you can do you know things like props.params if you needed to get a value from the URL that was given to you by the React router, for example. So, get rid of those. Um, once again, go remove all these commas. And then, no, we got to get rid of this down here too. So how is it that that you don't have to say something like function or any keyword before you define those func class names or those method names? That's just how ES6 does. Correct. Method methods. Yeah, yeah. So ES6, um, and really this is just syntactic sugar. Um, yeah, like we're using a transpiler, of course, and this is going to get turned back into objects and right. it's going to get um, all kinds of polyfills. But ES6 itself understands classes. So by declaring this class right here, I can just declare methods. I don't have to type the word function like this anymore. Yeah. It, it knows that it's a function. Right. Um, cool. So yeah, it makes... Uh, you just have to type a little bit less, which is nice. Uh, and if you if you wanted member variables, the syntax you would just define them as vars there in the body of the class. Um, if I wanted member variables, I would do probably do something like this. This dot equals you know. So you wouldn't actually declare them outside. I mean, what if you wanted them to be typed? Yeah. See, I well, if you want them to be typed, then you'd have to use like. TypeScript or something, yeah. Um, which I haven't really gotten into yeah. in any of these projects. Um, the other thing is, like in this user data, we had to put prop types down here. Uh -huh. And this sort of declare this just becomes um, an object on the user data class. 
but it's sort of a static value. Um, I think you can access it internally if you did something like this, <coughs> excuse me, this dot prop types. But um, typically, any member variables I would access this way, like this dot refs, okay. dot name, or whatever. Um, and you would put them in the constructor rather than in the body of the class. I think so. I, I think this is probably the way you want to initialize things. Um, at least that's what I've seen so far. I, I've not done any in-depth reading to determine, like, is there a camp that says you should declare them out here somehow? Um, in fact, I'm not even sure how you, I guess maybe you do something like, uh, well, no, that's if I wanted to declare an object. I'm not sure how you'd declare them out there. Probably like that. I'm going to guess this will probably crash. Let's try it. Um, yeah, see, it doesn't like that. Should make sure our test pass. So, yeah, with our refactor, kind of with the, just the standard way of doing it, all the tests pass. The nice thing, too, about having the test is if you want to experiment and say, oh, I wonder if this syntax would work. Like, what if I did something like this? You can try it, and then you don't have to go refresh the browser. You can just go straight to your test and go, oh, that was bad. That didn't work. Um, so, yeah. So I, I don't know how you would de declare variables um, in a class. I just posted a link about it. So, uh, let's so they say basically, no, you do it exactly like you said. <laughs> Okay, and I'll post this link to the show notes so that everybody has it, but um, there's no option to have class variables. Okay. Um, it's like that's intentional. Okay, so just do it on a constructor and then wait for ES7 and <laughs> they can discuss it in committee and do something different later on. Okay, so are there any other questions about how to how to do this? So I'll have everybody probably grab one of these tomorrow. Um, I think everyone has access to the Canvas starter app. So pull it down, make sure you have it running for the hack lunch tomorrow, and then just do a search for react.create class and grab one of them and go ahead and try to do this conversion. You can see it's pretty straightforward, pretty fast, pretty simple. But I think that actually writing the code will help to solidify some of the concepts.